All right. So once we have the measurements, we need to calculate them sometimes, right? Like if you're, you know miles, that's a measurement. You know hours or time, that's a measurement. Miles per hour is a calculation. So how do you take those precise measurements and use them for calculation? So we'll say precision, precision, that should be, uh, yeah, that's right, precision, calculations, done in four ways. Some of these will be measurements as well. These will sometimes apply to measurements. But how do we take those measurements? How do we round, essentially? How do we do our precision? Well, the first way is common sense. Sometimes it's just obvious. So, for example, if I say the average household... has 2.1 children. Okay, I don't think there's any 0.1 kids in any house. That'd be really weird and creepy. Right? 2.1 kids. What am I clearly going to round to? Two. Common sense. Now, if I say I need 4.4 gallons of paint... 4.4 gallons of paint to paint my house, what am I clearly going to round to? Five gallons. If I get four gallons, if I round down, I'm not going to have enough paint. I'm going to round up to five. Sometimes it's just common sense. The second way is accepted convention. So these are just rules that we all agree to. We all know it. It's kind of like common sense, but it's just sometimes it's not that obvious. Like it doesn't make sense to you necessarily, but it's still the accepted convention. So, for example, money. If I say something costs or I calculate it out and we get exactly $237 and I don't know, uh, 88 Point or eighty eight nine six. Well, yeah, there we go. Nine six. Sorry, I know that's not perfectly written. That's a nine, I swear. Eight eight nine six. Two hundred thirty seven dollars. Point eight eight nine six. What are we obviously going to round to? Two hundred thirty seven dollars and eighty nine cents. Because that's what we've accepted as convention. Now, some of you might say, well, it makes more sense just to round up $238. Nobody cares about that 11 cents. Some of you might say, I don't care about the penny round up to the 90. That doesn't make any sense. But this is the accepted convention we've all agreed on. Does that, is that clear? Or sometimes, and this is a little less well known, is lumber. There's an accepted convention for lumber as well. So for lumber, if I get a board that's 1.5 inches by 3.4 inches, what do I round that to? This is a 2 by 4 If you grab a 2 by 4 any 2 by 4 at Lowe's or Home Depot, it will be one and a half by three and a quarter inches. We got a, we've got a 2 by 4 right over there in the classroom. If you get a tape measure or ruler, you will see that it's not exactly two by four inches. It's a little bit less. Why do they round up? I couldn't answer that question, but it's just an accepted convention. Sometimes it's a math question and they tell you how to round, how precise you should be. We call that specified. It is specified to you. Specified precision. They say round to the nearest whole number. It's told to you. Okay, well, we'll say, uh, well, in this class, I will tell you how to round specifically in your questions. It'll say something like precision of one. And if you took the year one class, you've seen this kind of answer, precision of one. Does anybody remember what that means, what we round to? Round to the nearest whole number, exactly. Precision of one means round to the nearest one, the nearest whole number. If I say precision of 100, what am I saying? 
Somebody besides the niche, answer the next one. Yes, nearest hundred. That says precision. That's a P, not a D, I swear. If I say precision, precision, that, there should be an S in there. Yeah. Okay. Of 0, 0.0. Any ideas on what I'm rounding to? The nearest tenth place, or I'm going to say the nearest one decimal. Write out the word one. One decimal. And if I say precision of 0 0.000, what decimal are we going to this time? Thousandths, or we call it the nearest third decimal place. So we'll see, just write it out, third decimal. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say I had a number like, I don't know, I'll write this in another color so you can see it, but let's say we had a number like 5.46324. Uh, and I want you to round that based on this precision right here labeled. So this says round to the nearest third decimal place. What would this number round to? 5.463. Absolutely. That's it. When I say precision of that, you know, go to the third decimal place. Any questions? Okay. Now I have to go to the next page. I will let you be the judge whether or not you have to. So I'm going to write continued from page, and then you'll be the judge of what page you are continuing from. Continued from page, and then there's obviously going to be a blank for me. And I'm going to underline that. Now, the last way to do it, if you're working, oh, I'm sorry, y'all can't see this. If you're working for Elon Musk, he's not going to tell you, hey, round to the second decimal place, by the way. You're kind of expected to know how to round as an engineer. Does that make sense? If it's not specified to you, like on our activity next week that we do with our VEX machines, it's not going to tell you how to round. It's going to be based on your measurements. Make sense? You base it on what we call the least, so this is way number four, least precisely measured. The least precisely measured values. Okay, so let's say we have a circle with a radius of three centimeters. And I say, well, what is the area? Well, you might say, well, just pi r squared. And I know that that's three centimeters, but here's the deal. In math, they tell you this all the time. This isn't really true in the real world. It's only true in theory. Three centimeters does not equal 3.00 centimeters. And this is very important to understand. If somebody writes out 3.00, you know they measured it very precisely. If somebody says real quick, yeah, it's about three. You don't know what that is, really. In reality, in reality... If you see three centimeters, that could mean 2.8 centimeters, and they're, it's almost three, so they're rounding up. It could be 3.1 centimeters, and they're just rounding down because it's just too much work. Or it could be almost exactly it. In fact, it looks like it's exactly it. It's 2.997 centimeters, and they just can't tell the difference because their measure or their instrument isn't precise enough to measure that. It could be any one of these things, and that says three. So if all they give you is the number, you don't know much about it. Now, the question is, is why is this so important? Why is Mr. Anderson making a big deal about this idea? And so let's say we used three exactly. Let's say we use the number three. Let's see what we would actually get. So if it's pi r squared, so that's 3.14 times the radius, which is 3, so times 3 squared. Let's see what number we get exactly. What is that? 28.26. That's actually, let's use real pi this time. Let's use, so 
what is that? 3 squared, 3 squared, which is 9 times pi. And let's convert that. You hit this button right here to convert. And we get 28.27. I just wanted to give you the idea. We get an exact number, and that's kind of the idea. We get this very, very precise number, 28.27433, and it keeps going from there. That is a very, very precise answer. Your teacher will tell you to round to the first decimal place or something like that, right? But the thing is, this is assuming this is exactly 3. What if it was 2.7? How would that change my answer? So what if I said uh, pi, so pi times 2.7 squared? How would that change it? We would get... 22.9. Now, I'm going to make the argument that 22.9 and 28 are very, very different numbers. Do you see how the precision of that measurement is important? What if we went the other way? What if we said 3.3? Let's try that in our handy dandy calculator. Let's say pi times 3.3 squared. We get 34.2, which again is very different than 28.274333. This is very exact, but in reality, if they put if the measurement was 3.3 and they rounded to three, it's nowhere near 28. That's off by like 20 percent, something like that. We can figure it out, but I don't want to waste your time. So here's the deal. When you're given an answer that unprecise, or given a measurement that unprecise, we're going to use that number and round that far. And so your area should be around 28 centimeters squared. Area should be around 20. And because it could be six higher, it could be six lower, right? And in reality, even this answer isn't even correct because there's only one digit there. And so we're not even that sure about the 28. In reality, the answer should be around or it should be exactly 30 you should round up to the nearest significant digit centimeters squared but i would accept 28 personally but in reality and we'll talk about why the 30 centimeters in just a second is more correct than the 28 although i would accept both of these but the point is is we're not that certain of this number therefore we can't be this certain of the calculation based on it